In today's module, we're going to be looking at the secure development lifecycle and in particularly doing security, right? So when we look at the SDLC, it's really about developing solutions, software, systems, etc., right? And really, how do we do security? Where do we do security? What types of security are we doing, right? So let's look at our traditional, you know, the steps here, right? So, you know, and really it kind of starts off with planning. We have our requirements analysis, so really defining the requirements of our software, uh, the designing aspects of the software, the actual implementation, we, we, the actual coding bit. Um, and then obviously we want to be doing some testing of what we've produced and designed. Um, and then you actually deploying that in production. Um, and then finally, there's the ongoing maintenance and operations aspect. Now, something to kind of like remember here is this is kind of like a loosely kind of like a, a software development life cycle here is considered the traditional waterfall model. Uh, and really over the years, what we now see is we see CICD, continuous integration, continuous development. Uh, we see DevOps, DevSecOps, right? But at the core, it's still the traditional waterfall model. It's the software development lifecycle consisting of all these phases. Do the phases change? It really depends on who you talk to, right? So these aren't hard set in stone, right? I like to say these are like discussion points, right? They may vary from organization to organizations, from software development teams to other software development teams, but we'll just use this as a kind of like a starting point for our discussion, right? So it really in the planning kind of phase, what we're really doing here is we're planning with security, right? So we're doing risk planning and we're doing that kind of good stuff, right? And really from the planning stage, it's really to kind of set the agenda moving forward, right? And then really the, the real first step, I would say, when it comes to the SDLC is the requirements aspects, right? Analyzing the requirements. And here what we're doing is we wanna see at the table along with the actual rest of the software development team. And we wanna be able to talk about security requirements, the actual uh, compliance requirements and kind of like the risk requirements as well. So we wanna be having all these, and we wanna be thinking about these and making sure they're included as part of all the other requirements that are happening as part of the software, right? And then when we're designing that, um, when the team is designing, the software team is designing, uh, we want to be able to use, you know, threat modeling during the design, right? Look at all the attack vectors, the attack paths, and all that kind of good stuff. And we can use the Microsoft Stride method in here, right? And well, what we really want to do is when we're looking at the design, right? Uh, and that's, you know, initially, you know, before we get to the implementation coding aspects of it, we want to make sure that security design principles are included, right? The concepts of zero trust, right? That's embedded into our design here, right? And then really the implementation is really the execution, like the hands-on, the coding st stuff here, right? So as the software team is coding our, uh, the solution out here, right? What we want is we want to be able to scan the codes, right? We want to be doing static analysis, security testing, right? So basically scanning our codes. Um, and again, we want good security practices, right? For example, we don't want secrets embedded inside the code. We want secrets or passwords or anything confidential included in the actual, uh, you know, key vaults and, you know, all that kind of good stuff, right? And also, you know, we want good uh, configuration management practices and, you know, we want to be able to make sure that the software development team is implementing the actual uh, code in line with security practices here, right? And then, you know, finally, I'm just going to say as part of that initial, you know, bulk here, of activities around the SDLC is we got the testing, right? So these are traditional testing, uh, white box testing, black box testing, gray box testing. Uh, we got the dynamic uh, application security testing, the static application security testing again, right? So that's scanning the code. We did that during the implementation, but we could do it at, at the end, right? So during the implementation, we may do it in different phases. In the testing, we may do it towards the end as well. And also perhaps hire internal pen testers, right? So kind of like get that 
you know, the, from a, an attack vector, from an external perspective, you know, looking into the actual software. Um, and then when I talked about earlier about the white box testing, that's really testing while you know information about the code. The black box testing is you don't know anything about the system, the code, or anything like that. And gray box testing is a really a combination of, you know, somewhere in the middle between white box and black box testing. But remember, you know, testing doesn't have to wait right to the end while the implementation is completed. It can actually happen an ongoing activity. So even though I've actually indicated this as two separate boxes, the reality is that, you know, it could be a parallel task running side by side, right? Now, what we actually have is then we have the deployment phase, right? So the deployment phase could be, again, security configurations, but this may be part of the actual deployment, not necessarily the software. For example, if you're deploying the software inside the cloud, this is, again, security configurations associated with the cloud, right? And here you kind of want to deploy it. So let's say you take a piece of software and you deploy it in the cloud. Then you want to hire some external pen testers, right, to now test the the, the software along with the deployment as well. We want to make sure that it's kind of like FedRAT compliant and we're issuing now, we're thinking about issuing authorizations to operate, right, an ATO that may be valid for six months to a year, you know, depending on the software. Uh, and we also want to be doing security assessments, right? At the end of that deployment, we want to be able to say, you know, how does it check all the buttons for us, right? And at this stage, you know, while we may be doing in, in the previous step, doing some internal pen testing, we may now hire some external people or an external group to do some pen testing to get that seal of approval, right? And then finally, what we have during the maintenance of uh, aspects of it is all about the actual patch management. It's the ongoing security reviews, right? And it's also like incident management. So it's really the ongoing aspects of that software. Um, and that, essentially, that is all the steps of you know doing security in the SDLC, right? Now, something I just want to highlight here that you know I do this you know cut off line in the middle, right, uh, towards the bottom, there, that gray line that goes across, right? And when we look at it from a security perspective, if we're not involved earlier on, right, the cost increases when we want to make a change to the security. So just think about it during the implementation, they built all the code. And then we realized that, you know, there wasn't, there was something during the threat modeling it forgot, right? And that what came itself to surface when we did the testing, right? So now we would have to go back into the design phase, implementation, change some of that stuff to incorporate the security as well, right? So as we move down the security development, uh, the, uh, the software development lifecycle, the cost of change becomes more. And it becomes exponentially more once we actually move from the testing phase to the deployment phase, right? So that that is the actual line where, you know, while the costs are increasing, it drastically now increases when you want to make a change, right? Because now we're essentially done with the whole SDLC process, right? So just to kind of like recap here, you know, it's really security is everywhere. If you look at it, we're not doing security at the end. We're not doing only security at the beginning. It's consistent. It's throughout the software development lifecycle. Um, and also, you know, after testing, right, changes uh, most costly, right? So that's, we established that once we're doing the testing, the cost increases significantly. You know, also, if you look at it holistically, security is not an afterthought here right it wasn't something that was bought on it was organically it's embedded it's there right it's everywhere right uh, and then finally if we look at it when we're identifying security issues early we're reducing costs right so let's say we were doing something during the threat modeling design phase and we found some items there from a security perspective if we flagged it there you know to change something would be quite low in cost right so cost is always an important aspect of the software development life cycle. And I'll close with this remark by saying, you know, when we use the term software development life cycle, it's better to actually use the term SSDLC, which stands for Secure Software Development Life Cycle. Thank you.